Good morning, dear colleagues. We begin another round table devoted to internal reversions in tax law practice. I'd like to thank everybody for participation in this round table discussion. I would like to first to start uh, with the introduction of our moderators. This is Irje uh, uh, Nakovarsh, Vice President of the European Confederation of uh, Tax Consultants from the Czech Republic. Then we have Anatoly Gennadievich Pershutov uh, and uh, Peter, uh, Peter uh, Becherer, Gerbert Becherer, Vice President of the German consultants, uh, Stefan Ostry, uh, leading professor of the Internal International Tax uh, uh, Department, uh, uh, Ken Kwang, uh, uh, Tax Administration of the Netherlands, and Peter Reinhardt, partner Ernst Young. Peter Wolfgang, uh, Chief uh, Counselor of the Transfer Pricing of the Financial Operations, Stanislav Turbanov, uh, the partner of CMS Company, Kucherov, uh, uh, Lia Kucherov, Deputy Director of the Federal Ser uh, Service of the Financial Budget Supervision, and Shokin Sergei, uh, Deputy Director of the Federal uh, uh, Tax uh, Authorities, and and uh, Alek uh, Ashtibayev, uh, uh, Deputy Director of the Tax Authority of the Kazakhstan Republic. Dear colleagues, if you allow me, I would like to be very brief uh, because we have a very large audience uh, for this round table talk today. Uh, what is happening in uh, this uh, country in terms of the uh, pre-trial uh, uh, settlement of various dis of these tax uh, disputes? Uh, then I would like, in a nutshell, to describe on the new draft law of the Russian Federation on the pre-law uh, settlement of disputes. And uh, if you allow me. I would like to say that this uh, federal uh, system has been in operation since 2009 when we introduced special rules concerning pre-trial uh, settlement of disputes. Before that, the taxpayers had an alternative either to go to court or to appeal to the higher uh, tax authority. And after 2009, the law was adopted that in cases of various uh, 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 disputes with respect to taxation, you have to first appeal to the higher tax authority, and uh, if uh, the uh, taxpayer is not uh, happy with the uh, decision of this higher tax authority, then he may go to court. And uh, this new practice was uh, initiated by a huge number of various tax disputes that we had, and we loaded the Russian uh, judiciary with a lot of uh, such uh, appeal cases and Although uh, the, uh, perhaps the legal procedure was a little bit uh, formal in nature, but today we have uh, various uh, specific concrete results, the number of, uh, the number of uh, disputes uh, was uh, decreased by 50 percent, 5-0. And when we saw the efficiency, the f effectiveness of this system, we uh, tried to analyze what could be the other methods which would be of help of, uh, in uh, streamlining this procedure. So these special uh, special norms of pre-trial procedures, this was uh, they were initially introduced as a result of various tax audits, and we have special uh, cases of uh, inactivity. Uh, 
or inactions of when taxpayers appeal various fines that uh, we levy on them. So about one third of all the cases, of roughly 30 percent of all the cases, were originated by these uh, cases of uh, fines or penalties levied on taxpayers. And we decided to expand these uh, pretrial procedures practically to all sorts of uh, tax disputes. And so very briefly, I may formulate very briefly the basic thesis. First of all, this is the distribution of these uh, rules to all categories of these tax uh, disputes. Then it's, uh, uh, we expanded the time for appeals from 10 days to 30 days, 3-0. And this is very important because today, the taxpayer simply has got uh, no enough time to uh, get well prepared for his appeal because of the uh, uh, short time allowed. And very often these appeals may be drafted very formally. Therefore, we found it's reasonable to expand this period up to 30 days. And we decided also to have a, a fast track procedure for the solution of uh, such, uh, for the settlement of such disputes. And we have now this fast track uh, procedure of 15 days. It means that in the course of 15 days, we have to settle these disputes. And uh, very often we were uh, uh, accused of violating these time frames and uh, the, uh, the taxpayer uh, waited for our verdict, for our decision, and only after that he would go to court. So perhaps uh, Anatoly Gennadyevich will tell us more uh, details about this expanded uh, time frame uh, for not uh, going either for not going to court or for going to court. And probably today, so far, we have seen that the number of uh, complaints that we violate this time frame is minimum. And uh, what's interesting that really we uh, uh, we now have this uh, fast track uh, track method of uh, settlement of this uh, of these disputes. And uh, whenever we are, uh, do not uh, reach this decision, uh, it's very uh, topical and important for us to uh, resolve any dispute as soon as possible. And at the same time, we preserve for the taxpayer the chance of going to the higher tech authorities with his appeal. So it's up to the tax, uh, taxpayer to go either to the higher tax authority or to go to court. Okay, so the taxpayer can always appeal to court. Uh, it's a key thing for us. The constitutional right is there. <clears throat> uh, conceptually, uh, the uh, draft law and these amendments were supported by the President of the Russian Federation, by the Prime Minister, and uh, uh, today uh, this draft law uh, is um, um, uh, in the process of coordination within the presidential administration. And uh, we would like to listen to your opinion within the framework of the proposals that we have prepared. Today we would like to discuss the um, foreign experience as presented by the counterparts of ours. And uh, we would also like to listen to your opinion concerning uh, what we are doing uh, within the framework of uh, this particular issue. Uh, all this is very important for us. We understand that we are far from being perfect, that we still have a lot of uh, uh, problems. We um, make mistakes, and uh, your opinion is extremely important for us. And uh, uh, we also uh, think that uh, 
today, we uh, should also uh, talk about the experience of a pre-trial settlement of tax disputes um, from the point of view of its um, dissemination in different regions of the Russian Federation. That's why we invited um, the representatives of the Antitrust um, Authority and uh, Customs Authority. And my first question is to Stanislav Turbanov. Uh, now, uh, you have uh, uh, an extensive experience of work in an in, in international law firm. Um, Stanislav, uh, for quite a while, worked uh, um, within the um, Federal Tax Authority, and he can compare uh, the situation as it was in the past and as it is today. Uh, so, Stanislav. No, no. No, без микрофона нельзя. Извините. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, colleagues and friends. Um, no. If I look um, uh, um, uh, at the situation as a tax, tax consultant, at uh, the uh, procedures, um, I um, think positively of it, and uh, not uh, simply because the tax um, uh, payers get um, uh, a new chance of um, uh, addressing the assistance of consultants and payers for that service. Uh, now, uh, but to, uh, really, um, this process is um, 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 at the inception stage, so to speak. Uh, but uh, the uh, a procedure as such um, uh, improves the quality of work of the tax authorities of different levels, upper level and lower level. I discuss the issue quite often with my colleagues. Not everyone agrees with me. Uh, some believe that uh, so actually within one uh, system there is a, a subsystem that controls uh, the situation and the other one that validates the complaint so with one hand we uh, make decisions and with the other one we support them and uh, our practice shows that it really does not work that well um, in all instances moreover uh, even if and we know that it happens even if it happens that uh, um, at the stage of decision making, the territorial authority agrees uh, on uh, decision with the, the tax authority, and we know what the decision is going to be like at the level of the administration. Still, um, um, uh, it, it is uh, very important uh, to know that uh, there was another chance to rethink the situation. So this leads to a high quality of the tax authorities' decisions. And for the um, high-level authorities, that's another important factor that allows them to um, exercise control. Uh, the, uh, over the work uh, of the lower instances. Now, uh, if we um, leave out the issue of consultants, uh, the uh, procedure is uh, simple enough and it is not uh, uh, burdened with any um, unnecessary formalities and it's accessible as a, re as a result and it's speedy. The terms have already been mentioned earlier and I will go back to the issue a bit later. Our most positive um, um, uh, in relation to the norm mentioned by Sergei and I hope that it is um, uh, retained in the final version. Uh, the right for the uh, taxpayer uh, to um, appeal uh, to courts if the complaint uh, has not been considered timely. And uh, our colleagues uh, from abroad might speak about the practice that they have in their countries. Um, in, uh, last year, we had a situation when we had a decision on a, a complaint actually a year after the filing of that particular complaint. And uh, so 
it appears today, particularly if we uh, take the um, appeals, uh, there are practically no mechanisms uh, that can make the tax authorities uh, follow the time, uh, the set time framework. They just say, sit and wait, because your rights are not violated, since the decision of the tax authority uh, is not yet being enforced. So there is nothing to appeal against in court. So um, allow me to draw your attention to uh, the following. Um, the legislators should remember that uh, uh, this norm already contains a legal collision. As under, in the present day version, it is uh, stipulated that if uh, the um, uh, petition is not accepted, that the um, uh, taxpayer can go uh, to court, can appeal to court. Uh, um, it is not going to work the way it worked with the uh, true appeals, because if the decision is made on the appeal, then following the existing concept, this uh, decision is not uh, being enforced. So there is no act yet that we can appeal against. So. Uh, when we um, complete the work on the draft law, we should consider this particular collision, of course, and I uh, uh, hope very much that this norm is um, uh, retained and improved. Uh, thank you. That's all I wish to say. Oh, thank you, Stanislav. Uh, it's an extremely important issue, and uh, it was discussed um, in the presidential administration, and uh, today in the text of the draft law, this norm is contained. Uh, so in case the, uh, we... Um, violate the um, uh, time um, allocated, uh, there is a, a possibility to appeal. Um, but as for the formal consideration, uh, then of course um, uh, there is a certain lack of independence. and. Uh, we are being accused of that, and uh, um, allow me to describe some of the results. Um, uh, all, they, they are there. They are obviously there. Uh, if we take the whole of the Russian Federation and uh, the uh, complaints, appeals, and the decision-making procedure, then we can say that in 2011, uh, the first quarter of 2011, about 44 um, uh, percent uh, um, were denied. And actually, for the taxpayers, it is most important to know what kind of sum we're talking about here. Um, the amount of money we're talking about they, they says is um, about 25 percent, 25 percent. This is probably not that much, and um, as probably a lot to be desired, but uh, I really do not want to say whether it is a lot or not that much, because it's not the main indicator at all. But uh, still we can say today that we have stepped away from the formal um, uh, consideration within the um, um, framework of appeal. and. Uh, uh, the judicial practice is most important on the cases that uh, um, we have, and uh, we definitely uh, want our decisions uh, to um, um, follow the uh, development of the judicial practice. And, uh, uh, further on, allow me to give the floor to um, uh, Mr. Kucherov. Uh, what is your opinion of the initiatives uh, we have come up with? What do you think uh, are the advantages and disadvantages? Now, within the framework of our, um, my research work, I um, uh, studied the foreign experience of the uh, pre-trial settlement. And uh, everything shows uh, that the Russian Federation follows a civilized uh, uh, route when uh, settling tax disputes. I think uh, everybody present here has um, uh, looked on the, the pages of the um, information bulletin of the arbitrage court, and uh, it's not a secret at all. The uh, tax and customs disputes are uh, um, number one and number two on the list of um, uh, disputes and the number of disputes. Of course, we can uh, pretend that all the Disputes go through court, uh, which is a civilized way, and everything seems to be just perfect. But if we look at the experience abroad, we will see that there is practically no country that uh, does that. Um, uh, up to the year 2009, we um, acted just uh, like that, but we know what the expenses were, how uh, much it uh, cost us uh, to um, take all the cases to court. Even in those countries where there are specialized 
specialized tax courts in most of the um, English language uh, countries. There are uh, these specialized courts. Uh, they still um, uh, deal with just about 10 to 15 percent of all the emerging disputes. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, tax fear is uh, thought with conflict because uh, there is a contradiction of interests, interests of the taxpayer, private interests and public interests, the fiscal interest of the um, tax authority, represented of the, by the tax authority. Any state should think um, about the ways and methods of uh, how to uh, reduce the um, um, number of conflicts and how to settle the conflicts and the disputes. And we should not um, um, limit ourselves just to the pretrial settlement mechanisms, although these mechanisms exist in almost all the countries of the world. Here we need to um, consider other mechanisms as well. And we should uh, um, continue um, evolving and uh, um, we should uh, start using other mechanisms because in the global practice there is the mechanism of tax compromise for example, uh, which is, mm, in fact, uh, the, the, sorry, uh, the, these are agreements actually between the tax authorities and the taxpayers, which they establish uh, um, uh, before the uh, uh, auditing. And uh, the mechanism allows to avoid conflict as such. It uh, does not uh, allow the situation to develop uh, and reach the level of a conflict, and uh, both parties remain satisfied within the framework of the compromise. In certain countries, the mechanism of uh, tax mediation is being used, uh, so we, we know that uh, uh, respective Russian law covers just the um, uh, 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 civil um, um, uh, law, uh, but in other countries uh, the tax law is part of it. Uh, well, then we should not forget the tax consultants, uh, practically in all the European countries. Uh, there is um, 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 this profession, and uh, it's regula the, the work of the consultants is regulated by legislation, and consultants stand between the tax authorities and the taxpayers. And uh, um, uh, due to uh, their uh, responsibilities and duties, uh, they um, 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 make sure that the taxpayers comply with their um, liabilities and uh, um, thus um, uh, the um, level on the, 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 the intensity of conflicts goes down. We know that most of the tax disputes uh, um, um, are not associated with uh, intentional non-payment of taxes, but most often they are associated with the lack of knowledge, with the wrongful interpretation of the tax law. I think everybody present here will agree with me that the tax uh, law is most difficult, and even professionals in this field can hardly say that they know all the uh, details of it. And the consultant, um, as um, we believe, can uh, help us um, uh, reduce the number of disputes. And um, uh, allow me to mention the initiative of the Chamber of Tax Consultants of Russia. They have drawn a draft law which makes it possible to um, actually to make, um, to legitimatize the work of the consultants, so to speak, which uh, seems to me is going to help very much and will um, decrease uh, the number of uh, conflicts. And uh, back to pretrial proceedings, proceedings. We should know that the pretrial order exists um, uh, outside of uh, the uh, tax relations. The Code on Civil um, Violations actually contains the norms that uh, um, uh, allow uh, the administrative settlement of disputes. And um, 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 in my profession I, and in my uh, position, I very often dealt with um, uh, the uh, complaints and appeals at the level of the um, uh, budgetary supervisory authority. Mostly we are engaged with the violation of the uh, currency regulations um, uh, in um, foreign economic relations, but uh, we probably do not have as fine statistics as the Federal Tax Authority, the number of um, reversed uh, decisions with us is somewhat lower. But nonetheless, um, 
Oh, it's an, an extra uh, um, uh, opportunity for the economic entities uh, to find truth and uh, justice without uh, um, using the mechanisms of judicial uh, protection. So I stand um, for the improvement of the system of pretrial settlement. I'm well familiar with the draft law prepared by the uh, Federal Tax Authority, and I can say that uh, by the major parameters of this draft law, um, it complies with the mechanics used uh, in other um, countries of the world. That is all very important. And now, the number of uh, disputes, uh, uh, as you said, is still quite high, and we really should uh, uh, try to reduce it to 10 to uh, 15 percent, um, uh, as in most of the countries. When I introduced our draft law, I did not mention that we uh, calculated what is going to happen when we uh, enact it. We are planning to um, uh, uh, spread these norms uh, um, uh, starting with uh, 2014, and according to our calculations, the number of disputes will um, uh, be 50 uh, percent lower. Uh, that's very important, um, as we say it. Uh, now the next question is to uh, Sergei Shohin. Could we have the microphone? No, no, no. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time because the problems we face are almost the same as the ones that uh, the tax authorities come across. So we uh, carefully watch everything that's happening in the field of uh, new legislation. And on Monday at a meeting, we discussed uh, the initiatives and uh, um, the, um, we were thinking um, about, the, uh, about similar approaches. Uh, uh, starting with uh, 2006 or 7, uh, we began to um, look attentively at the mechanisms of pretrial settlement because uh, the disputes are numerous. Why is this so uh, important for the tax authority? Because 75, 80 percent uh, are associated with customs value, with the payments, uh, um, with the excises, with VAT, and so on and so forth. And uh, we're, we're quite often losing uh, in these disputes. And uh, the work we're uh, doing now um, uh, last year allowed us uh, to do the following. Next, last year, 50 percent of uh, complaints we uh, had um, um, ended in the reversal of our initial decision, and this continues. Uh, this uh, year, we are seeing the same trend. Uh, the number of cases taken to court is 20 percent lower than last year. And then there is one other thing. Well, complaints, that's uh, obvious. Uh, yes, we uh, consider those. I'm not going to speak about the system, which is well streamlined, which is uh, at the same time quite complex. Um, but uh, we are also um, um, nowadays checking the decisions made by the tax, uh, by, by the sorry, by the customs inspectors. And last year, we were able to reverse without waiting for the complaints. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, about. 50 percent of uh, decisions, and uh, th including 35 of uh, appeals to court. So um, that means we have um, a lot to do, and there is a, um, a very um, a good space and extended space where we can work. Now, for the parties, um, it's a most benign procedure because we collect the documents. So they do not have to take documents to court. as one month uh, for the consideration of the complaints and for the um, remedying of uh, different drawbacks, and there are other advantages as well, but I'm not going to speak about them. That's, so that's what we are doing. That's where uh, planning to do and act. Questions, please. Uh, no microphone, no translation. 
do you have a certain procedure to uh, to uh, consider these complaints uh, 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 with uh, within the, your customs union and uh, are there any specific uh, rules? The so-called uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Troika codes that we have, uh, we have certain laws, of course, to consider this customs uh, uh, dispute regulation. And uh, the uh, only difference is the time frame of consideration. This and uh, there are different uh, customs uh, uh, stations uh, different uh, therefore the time they take for consideration may be different as far as our high court uh, I had a chance of dealing with this uh, court uh, judges. So far, we do not have a standard procedure. It's now in the uh, making. It's in the pipeline. And uh, the anyway, we believe that the decisions uh, drawn by the uh, uh, court, uh, they are... Uh, would be standard very soon, but so far we do not have standard decisions. Thank you, Sergei. Now, Andrei Tsirikovsky, what's your opinion of the initiatives? Uh, I received this uh, uh, microphone from the custom service as a Benton in uh, in races. So uh, far, we cannot uh, claim that we have the same uh, uh, we have the same uh, number of uh, court cases. Uh, in our case, the number of uh, uh, court cases is growing, and I shall explain why the court cases is growing. Therefore, the anti-monopoly disputes, the number of these anti-monopoly disputes is growing, and so far uh, the courts cannot even cope with this number. Uh, but so uh, I would explain uh, why it is so and which uh, mechanisms are uh, fit to overcome this problem. I would like to... Uh, uh, to discuss two procedures. First of all, this is anti-monopoly legislation and the reversion of all, uh, laws. In fact, the decisions are uh, taken in the, the atmosphere of uh, quasi judicial procedures. The Commission considers uh, a case and then arrives or takes up a decision. Therefore, theoretically, it may never uh, go to court. In the course of consideration, a few interesting issues may pop up or arise, and I would call them this pre-trial settlement of disputes. We have a certain system of uh, of uh, soft settlement, which is uh, very close uh, to uh, the Anglo-Saxon system. This is a deed with the uh, court. And uh, uh, for cartel participation, uh, uh, the participants, if uh, he proves uh, and if he uh, relays the facts, then he would uh, be partially or totally deprived of his responsibility. And so far, we are now discussing with the uh, Internal um, uh, Affairs Ministry so that uh, this uh, that this uh, guilty party uh, may be uh, may be uh, released of any uh, responsibility for the criminal case. And the second uh, version or option is the uh, free willing uh, reconstruction of the failure. So if the anti-monopoly legislation was violated, the penalty will be diminished uh, or even uh, 
or even uh, nullified. Therefore, this uh, willing, uh, the willing uh, decision to cooperate with the court again would uh, diminish the uh, penalty. However, there is one but, or if we are looking attentively at your practice, of the internal reversions of laws, but from the uh, uh, from the formal points of view, uh, in our case, we do not have so far this mechanism of uh, internal uh, reversions in. Uh, laws and at one time uh, that will, uh, was a current uh, basis uh, uh, for our current jokes that uh, the uh, chief would say I cannot uh, change the uh, law and I can only uh, fire my uh, subordinates but uh, what uh, really happens is that uh, the uh, decisions of our territorial organs very often not because they are bad they are they are simply not aware of the current practices they simply are not aware of the current algorithms and they may uh, take up a decision which is unfair not only to some uh, business uh, participants and uh, we, uh, it's, uh, in our office, uh, we uh, would uh, also uh, uh, would uh, insist on uh, reviewing such cases. Therefore, in our work, it's very interesting to uh, learn about your practices. I wanted, in a nutshell, to tell you that, of course, it's not the topic for this roundtable talk, but since we have today in the uh, group here uh, both uh, tax authorities and uh, customs authorities, I would like, I wanted to discuss the issue of penalties of finance, because in the anti-monopoly uh, legislation or in customs uh, code uh, legislation, we have different interpretations of the word penalty or fine and again this increases the number of uh, court cases and and perhaps uh, we should set up a working group jointly for uh, uh, and to discuss this issue i second your proposal uh, questions to andrey yurievich thank you for your interventions thank you anyway no microphone, sorry, no translation. Dear colleagues, I would like now to uh, recognize the judge of the High uh, Appeal Court or Arbitration Court, Anatoly Grigorievich, recently expressed his views on the settlement of disputes and there is a number of uh, uh, regulations, decisions on this core, and I would like him, uh, and I would like to call on uh, Anatoly Gennadievich and to describe the existing procedures uh, in this respect. Thank you, Sergei Shotovich. I would like to start with a compliment. Uh, not very often we hear uh, phrases uh, from representatives of the arbitration court, but I would like to say that in my view, and judging from the interventions of the of the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service and Customs Service, we may draw a conclusion that the Federal uh, anti-monopoly uh, service is a kind of a driver uh, in the uh, promotion of these pre-trial solutions. Unfortunately, our uh, colleagues uh, have left, but indeed we have to remember their methods, uh, uh, the methods of anti-monopoly service, and in uh, basically uh, after 2009, we started uh, practicing these pre-trial methods of settlement of disputes, and uh, the uh, taxes uh, were uh, 
claimed only after uh, court uh, decisions, and at that time the courts were at the verge of collapse. And uh, the introduction of this pretrial uh, settlement uh, was uh, dictated uh, by the needs that many uh, parties or entities would be simply deprived of the chance to have um, to have fair judgments, and uh, the idea of. Uh, charging this uh, pre-trial uh, sanctions and I remember that it took us seven years uh, to develop these pre-trial uh, procedures and I remember the time when we discussed law 137 uh, uh, in uh, 2005 and uh, the law says that it was the uh, new law on the pre-trial procedures and so they wanted to know what would be the uh, legal position of the higher court of the Russian Federation. And as you remember, the first version of that court of this law was uh, very constrained, restricted with a uh, penalty uh, up to 50,000 uh, rubles, but uh, that version of the law uh, didn't exist for long, and now we do not have this limitation. Now, six or seven years later, nobody is explaining their uh, fears about the new procedures, especially that this new uh, 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 penalty procedures and pre-trial procedures, they uh, no longer uh, force people to raise brows and to uh, be, custom, uh, to be aston uh, astonished. So it's not a question whether we should introduce these new laws or not. Of course, it's uh, the time for improvements in these procedures of pretrial settlements and uh, what, uh, how we started this roundtable discussion. This is just the right uh, proof that this list of uh, various categories is uh, getting bigger and bigger. The, the uh, list of procedures that we may make use of uh, action and, uh, and so-called uh, lack of action uh, or whenever, uh, the, uh, whenever the defendants may uh, appeal to the court and uh, the uh, period of uh, appeal increase from 10 days up to 30 days and I've personally always supported this increase in the time frame uh, and so many uh, experts express similar ideas and uh, it was a popular way of thinking and we're very glad now that these ideas have now uh, have now are implemented. But however, very often we have some very, uh, uh, very uh, small, very small uh, so-called uh, spoons of uh, crude oil in a uh, bucket of honey. So uh, today I have that uh, little uh, spoonful of, um, uh, of oil uh, on, uh, I mean actually some criticism, a little criticism of the, uh, of the new law. But to my mind, the major shortcoming of this law, uh, it uh, downgrades uh, the importance of this uh, set of such disputes in court. Of course, if we would have this new version of the law, then we would uh, increase the number of court cases and we have to increase the period, the so-called waiting period before the uh, trial. And uh, I would read you Article 3 of this law, which uh, stipulates uh, when this law is enacted. It's enacted from the 1st of January of 2015 uh, after its official publication. And item 3 of this uh, article 3, uh, item 3, 
Anyway, this item stipulates that in those cases when the uh, uh, time frame of appeals is extended or violated, uh, the term of uh, appeal may be in uh, uh, may, may be enacted uh, uh, starting the day uh, before the actual before the actual uh, law becomes into force uh, this uh, case I objected uh, uh, to this uh, provision I risk to repeat it here because for the last two days we have heard and we discussed uh, this uh, things with my colleagues and today I have some additional arguments to this effect therefore I would like to discuss uh, here about the procedure of inaction of this uh, law about the time frame say on December 22 the uh, uh, tax authority uh, takes up a decision and the tax payer would like to appeal this decision so within 10 days he has to do it according to the present law on the 15th of uh, on the 15th of january he really sends this appeal to the court and the question arises has he lost uh, his right to appeal that uh, resolution or not by the present law he has lost according to the new law he would retain this right for the uh, uh, period of 30 days so he has not lost this right in other words this is just a prerequisite for a new court case and if we would have this new norm the uh, uh, the tax authority would refuse to discuss this appeal and the taxpayer in principle may appeal this uh, decision of the higher tech authorities because he was refused uh, in his appeal so if we take uh, article 5 of the tax uh, code which pre uh, stipulates the time frame uh, this is uh, item 3 and 4 and the item 3 stipulates uh, that uh, the tax code which introduces additional guarantees uh, uh, for the taxpayer has got the reverse force and uh, item 4 uh, says that this reverse 4 is only effective when it is uh, prescribed by law so in, in this case if the uh, if the legislature uh, did not uh, introduce this item 4 we would be guided only by item 3 in uh, accepting this uh, period of time frame and this uh, items 3 and 4 today makes things more difficult because we have the tax of uh, with tax code adopted by the federal uh, legislature and it seems that everything is okay so far but I do believe that article 5 of the tax code they codify the general principles the introduction of uh, these laws in the uh, extension of time and it seems to me that article 5 uh, codifies uh, the uh, issues of principle I believe that from the theoretical point of view this problem should be given a second thought but if the, uh, this principle itself is violated by this law the uh, taxpayer should uh, raise this issue and it could become an issue for the constitutional court to consider why should we create uh, given the uh, opinion uh, which is rather high about the new law some new grounds for controversy 
because the problem uh, actually actually what we're talking about is only a few days therefore the December of 2012 when the uh, legal law, uh, organs become more and more active so they uh, audit uh, te all taxpayers and they would uh, uh, take up their decisions before the new uh, law comes into effect. These will be dozens, uh, possibly hundreds of these decisions when um, taxpayers potentially can raise this uh, question. We'll immediately have an increase of court cases. Should we allow this? Uh, after um, uh, for so many years uh, trying to reduce the number of uh, court cases. And uh, uh, it seems to me that um, um, uh, we're talking about a positive example of how um, the um, uh, joint approach of the uh, legislator of the courts of the um, tax authorities um, bring about a positive result through different methods, organizational and uh, um, uh, others. So, so uh, here I think we should just uh, correct certain things uh, um, uh, in compliance with the uh, present-day federal law. And then we remove the problem. I don't think there are the major uh, objections to that. I'm talking about uh, high load on tax authorities. Well, but that's uh, what we're aiming at uh, when we increase the term from 10 days to 30 days. We are doing exactly that. Uh, even if um, there is an increase um, of this uh, time span, uh, then um, I still think mm -hmm, uh, the, the consequences might be just the way I described them. Uh, another more serious problem that I'm going to tackle is as follows. Now, I assume... Uh, I, I'll, I, uh, I, I understand why this um, issue has not been tackled in this uh, law uh, all the, after so many years of discussion. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, Supreme Arbitrage Court uh, made some rulings concerning that, but we're talking here about the um, um, possibility for the taxpayer to take uh, part in the um, litigation procedures. Now, uh, uh, at present, when uh, the draft law is almost at the final stage, uh, it has been approved by the uh, Prime Minister, by the uh, presidential administration. So um, I don't think this uh, should be included into the new law. Let the draft law be adopted as it is at present. But uh, then we should continue our discussion and um, uh, should probably start it quite soon. Now, uh, I mentioned uh, one uh, resolution of the Presidium um, um, reached about, about two years ago. Uh, the uh, taxpayer um, appealed against one of the decisions because on the grounds that he was not notified properly, had not been able to take part in the uh, consideration procedures. We agreed with the tax authorities since the acting legislation um, did not really stipulate any of that, um, the, the presence at the hearing. So uh, still we think that the legislators should uh, consider this situation. The legislators should decide whether the taxpayer should be present or not. And uh, it seems to me that when we um, uh, 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 spoke about the idea of the uh, pre-trial uh, settlement, and uh, uh, I remember uh, the, the professional um, environment and the community um, uh, all discussed the resolution of 1997, uh, because then we said either there is an appeal to the higher body uh, of the tax authority, or he misses the three-month period of time, which is envisaged by uh, Part 2 of Article uh, 193 of the Arbitrage and Procedural Code, and we decided that the, um, uh, these uh, terms should not prevent uh, the taxpayer uh, um, uh, from settling the dispute in a, a pre-trial order. And uh, 
uh, in the same resolution we said something quite different and in the others this was mentioned again and again. The pretrial settlement procedures uh, should not um, uh, reduce in any extent the uh, guarantees that the uh, taxpayer has. After all, the taxpayer can always go to court, and these pretrial procedures should uh, provide similar guarantees, uh, similar to what one gets going through the court procedures, particularly when we uh, take the uh, tax uh, sanctions and penalties, because after all, um, it's uh, not any longer the judicial procedure procedure at all. So um, it's, the idea is quite clear, and my opponents quite often say, okay, they, this is not a judicial procedure when uh, the appeal goes to the uh, superior tax authority, but there is a guarantee, there is a possibility to speak up for the taxpayer when the uh, appeal is being considered. Um, uh, so this should be accorded uh, to the taxpayer, I think. Uh, sometimes it's important just emotionally. The taxpayer needs to know that uh, his plea has been heard, uh, that his position has been presented properly, and uh, possibly um, that's going to satisfy him and uh, possibly he is not going to appeal to court. But if we deny the request, uh, then it might provoke him, provoke him uh, uh, to going to the um, arbitrage court. I remember um, um, what happened when I was uh, still a judge of the district court and there was one civil case then. I can't remember the details of the case uh, anyway, but the party that lost, uh, and, and uh, uh, I do not want to be um, accused of uh, immodesty, but nonetheless it happened. The lost party said at that time, although the uh, decision is not in my favor, I am happy with that decision because I could see that all the circumstances um, had been taken in. So sometimes uh, uh, the um, procedure itself lowers the um, level of conflict, and uh, this, so that's what we should be aiming at. So uh, I suggest that we discuss this problem not necessarily within the framework of this particular draft law, but let's not um, uh, procrastinate. Let's uh, uh, work on that. And one other thing, um, um, which I would like to mention, being impressed uh, by the uh, uh, start of the day yesterday when we discussed the open government issue and uh, the methods of the discussion and uh, a consideration of the draft laws and uh, then also remembering some of the uh, ideas um, uh, discussed at the conference on the 15th of May. Uh, if we um, discussed publicly the law on, on the police, uh, although uh, there are not that many people um, uh, to deal with the police as there are dealing with the tax authorities. The tax uh, uh, law for us um, uh, is of much uh, greater importance and interest. Anyway, so um, uh, I believe that um, uh, potentially this particular issue, the issue of the uh, involvement of the taxpayer in the consideration processes, uh, could be uh, taken to the level of public discussion. And as for uh, the uh, higher role of the uh, tax consultants uh, mentioned by Ilya Olegovich, and uh, yes, um, um, they, this um, um, could be suggested as well. Uh, the process could work just, for example, through tax consultants. I remember um, um, uh, that there, uh, there was a situation when we talked just about the professional lawyer involved in the uh, proceedings, uh, but um, no, why not in the uh, Supreme Arbitrage Court? Uh, um, the uh, uh, taxpayers should be uh, represented just by the professionals. This, there is um, a plan, there is an idea pertaining to that, and maybe with the appeal um, we should um, exercise a similar approach because a higher level of professionalism is required and possibly one could act through the tax consultants. And uh, 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 then uh, uh, five minutes and uh, I'm finished. Uh, so I'm not going to give you the name of the person who told me that because uh, he, I was not authorized to refer, to quote him, but one of the um, uh, 
uh, heads of the federal um, tax authorities say that uh, uh, they, uh, they have a certain concern with letting the taxpayer be present at the um, consideration of the uh, appeal or complaint. Uh, they are afraid that the individual who uh, considers the case might be accused of uh, uh, oh, yes of, of corruption. Yes, um, uh, there might be. Uh, uh, corruption component in that, but we could uh, try and resolve this matter differently. Uh, some methods um, were uh, suggested somewhat early, and uh, now they are um, uh, turned into law. And it's possible to avoid this type of uh, accusation uh, uh, directed at judges. A couple of examples. So a case is being prepared for hearing in court. Both parties are invited. One party does not show up. The other one uh, appears. So what should be done? Uh, should uh, the uh, hearing be postponed because of the uh, missing party or the judge talks to one party um, being afraid that he is accused of uh, um, having a um, uh, unipartite uh, conference. So, in order to avoid this, uh, um, the uh, type of uh, discussion uh, we're talking about has to be um, uh, recorded. So, that already means that the judge is not exactly just face to face, tete a tete with the, um, uh, one of the parties. And uh, um, in courts, so, uh, the uh, audio recording is uh, allowed and is introduced, and it's quite effective. We know that um, it happened uh, that the judges were um, accused of uh, reading out uh, the uh, sentence um, in the uh, courtroom and then uh, writing down something quite different in the uh, document. But if we have the audio and video recording, that we um, get rid of this particular problem, and we already have cases which um, um, actually are associated exactly that when the resulting part of the uh, final decision um, recorded uh, does not comply with the resulting um, uh, part of the um, sentence in writing. Now, the judges know quite well that there is a certain control over them. On the other hand, the judge is protected against ungrounded accusations, and the same is true of the um, uh, tax authorities. So the mechanisms are in place, and uh, it is quite um, uh, easy to avoid these situations, but uh, at the same time, um, I believe that we should not um, uh, forget this idea. Uh, thank you, and excuse me for taking up uh, too much of your time. Now, as for the enforcement uh, and enactment, uh, we will go back to that, and we might be able to um, updated somehow. As for the uh, consideration the presence of the taxpayer and the uh, corruption uh, component there, I don't know who said that, but I think it's nonsense. Actually, you are absolutely correct here that the, the uh, courts have gone through that. The major issue is not uh, in that. Uh, when um, uh, considering um, um, uh, the uh, cases, we follow not to the law, but uh, uh, something different. This procedure um, um, is uh, uh, documentary. Uh, I mean, it's based on documents. If we invite uh, taxpayers um, in each and every case, then we are not going to implement the idea at all. Um, or uh, maybe we should uh, speak about a particular type of disputes uh, um, um, within which the uh, participation of the taxpayer um, is uh, welcome. But otherwise, uh, we um, push ourselves into a, a dead end. And uh, um, so uh, certain categories, specific categories, uh, I think this is something we could discuss. Well, thank you very much. And uh, further on, I wanted to give the floor to um, uh, Irje Nikovaro. Uh, Irje. So as far as we know, in the Czech Republic, uh, 
uh, taxpayers go to court quite often, and there is quite a lot of disputes, and uh, it happens that they uh, disagree with the opinion of the tax authority. What is your authority? What is your practice in this respect? Uh, thank you very much for the floor, for the uh, floor given to me, and uh, for, for the invitation to take part in our um, most interesting uh, discussion. Allow me to um, uh, describe the work of the Superior uh, Administrative Court in the Republic. Now, uh, the work of the uh, Superior Administrative Court was started in the Czech Republic in the year 2003, and it was a continuation of the uh, work uh, uh, stopped by the Second World War and of uh, the work carried out by the Austro-Hungarian Administrative Judicial Court founded in 1875. Uh, at present, uh, this uh, administrative court um, has uh, 30 judges and 51 assistants. Uh, the work is carried out um, uh, in, three, uh, in, in nine senates. Uh, about 3,000, um, uh, 3,300 uh, cases are uh, tried by this uh, court. 550 of them are related uh, to uh, tax um, uh, legislation and taxation in general. It's interesting uh, to see how the uh, number of um, uh, tax cases has been changing. And um, um, I think that this change is associated with the quality of work of the tax uh, administration in the Republic. Now, when we take the uh, uh, tax-related cases, we must say that there are two levels of uh, uh, judicial proceedings. Uh, when the tax authority carries out its uh, um, uh, work and uh, auditing, and uh, uh, then in relation to the results of this auditing, a uh, petition can be uh, sent to the original administration. Thanks to the changes of the, of the law, uh, this is um, um, a situation when the uh, taxpayer um, has to um, um, uh, has to uh, provide additional um, payment, uh, um, not on the basis of the decision of the financial administration of the first level, uh, but uh, as it was uh, previously, but on the basis of the decision of that particular body. Now. Uh, the um, then appeal uh, can be uh, filed uh, to the um, original uh, court, at which there are specialized administrative divisions and uh, uh, colleges which um, uh, deal with the tax cases and taxation cases. Now. As for the decision of this uh, court, there can be uh, a cassation appeal uh, filed into the administrative court in, Bro in Brno. And uh, um, before this administrative court began to work in Czech, there were eight uh, in the Czech Republic. There were eight regional courts. Uh, the decisions of which, um, in the field of taxation, very often um, differed from each other. So, from the point of view of the application of the tax law, we uh, used to have uh, the uh, we had eight republics, so to speak. And uh, first of all, uh, we believe it is necessary to unify the judicial practice and to make sure that there is a certain predictability in the decision-making process of the courts. And uh, um, the, uh, the, the uh, court uh, um, uh, sum uh, summarizes and uh, analyzes the uh, decisions made by the courts of different levels. And uh, this is uh, done in uh, two ways, so to speak. On the one hand, uh, through the uh, preparation of collections of decisions, and on the other hand, uh, through the uh, website. And the decisions uh, open for publication can be found in those proceedings, and uh, they are selected for the um, uh, um, proceedings by the um, presiding judge. And uh, uh, then 
um, they are uh, sent over to all the judges um, uh, who work in the regional uh, courts, and uh, they are also sent over to the sent out uh, to the law schools uh, to the. Um, um, NGOs uh, to ombudsmen, and they used to be sent in the past uh, to the Chamber of uh, Tax uh, Consultants. Then these decisions are approved at the plenary session of the Administrative Court. And uh, uh, the um, uh, this is, it's most important to make sure that the procedures here are proper, uh, because sometimes it happens that a specific decision of the court um, uh, um, is um, uh, related to a whole set of specific circumstances, and the publication of this particular decision can lead uh, to a rather negative and undesirable changes. In So these uh, new decisions are collected in this uh, publication by the High Administrative Court, which includes uh, all the decisions of the court, including specific cases of consideration. And here uh, all the interested parties may find uh, some precedents uh, similar to their cases. And uh, it's interesting how this high court deals uh, with uh, professionals. Uh, once a year, the, uh, the chief judge uh, of the administrative course organizes seminar for all the uh, grassroots advocates uh, and uh, this uh, seminar is uh, sponsored by this high court and uh, roughly 100 specialists are uh, in uh, taxation and in various uh, uh, legal issues uh, come to attend these uh, seminars and uh, various reports are presented at these uh, forums and uh, uh, tax consultants and various other specialists actively participate in these discussions. I can tell you that these forums are very instrumental uh, for the correct in, uh, interpretation of various laws and bylaws because we want uh, to uh, have a, a community of highly respected and knowledgeable uh, lawyers and advocates, and we pay a lot of attention to upgrading of their skills. The uh, higher court judges are very welcome at various uh, seminars held by the uh, tax chamber. And uh, t uh, today, uh, our uh, tax chamber uh, outreaches uh, uh, to the international audience, and we have now uh, contact with uh, other international foreign uh, ch uh, tax chambers. And uh, we also invite uh, high. Uh, Lawyer, uh, high-level lawyers and uh, officials from the Ministry of Justice of foreign countries to participate in our uh, forums and uh, meetings. And of course, uh, all the audience welcomes such uh, appearances, presentation and uh, reports. And and uh, the, uh, pa uh, any party may uh, apply to this higher court only through advocates, and advocates should be uh, well versed in providing various legal recommendations uh, in terms of uh, uh, taxation and the way uh, all the uh, concession uh, uh, appeals should be uh, 
should be filed, including uh, various courts, uh, various, uh, and of course this also applies to various uh, court decisions at the regional level and then at the higher levels. And uh, sometimes uh, these uh, advocates should be uh, should make him, themselves ready for quite prolonged procedures, sometimes lasting for two years, especially in case of appeals to high court. And the decisions of the high administrative court are final. However, there is a chance to appeal this decision in the constitutional law. Of course, such appeals uh, are not frequent, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, only 663 cases were appealed uh, and uh, 583 of them were uh, remain uh, intact and upheld by this constitutional court, although uh, uh, about 60 of them uh, were uh, reversed. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to quote the uh, words of the uh, chief judge of this high administrative court. We have come to uh, un our understanding that the administrative uh, administration of justice should be public whenever we take up a decision on any specific case or in any uh, or, uh, for the activities of any public body, including courts. And uh, uh, always we run against uh, risks of uh, bureaucratic uh, decisions uh, taken. Therefore, uh, this is a very fragile entity and we have to uh, uh, make our court's decisions very uh, reliable and logic. And I'd like now to ask my uh, colleague to uh, uh, say a few words about his experience in this respect. Thank you, Yeshi. Uh, I would like to tell you something about avoidance and settlement of tax disputes in Germany, the German experience, and in so far uh, not only about the settlement, also about the avoidance of tax disputes. At first, let me tell you uh, that's why some basic principles of the tax procedure in Germany, as a result uh, of the German constitution, they are fixed in the general tax code in Germany. It's called Abgabenordnung. According to the German constitution, the tax authorities as an executive body are bound to constitution, of course. They have to investigate the facts ex officio and have to consider in each case all important circumstances, including those which are favorable for the involved party. The tax authority depends on the cooperation with the taxpayer. Therefore, the General Fiscal Code provides for certain duties of the taxpayer to cooperate with the administration. To protect the civil rights and liberties, the tax authority is subject to the constitutional law prohibition and excessiveness that means all measures applied in the procedure must be duly justified. According to general experiences, there must be evidence for possible tax liability. During the procedure, the right to be heard and to have access to the records is the most important for the involved party. They will have the opportunity to comment on the facts before an administrative act will be issued. The principle of the protection of legitimate expectations binds the administration towards the taxpayer if, due to the pre behavior elements of confidence were created on which the taxpayer relied on and did concrete arrangements. The principle of good faith demands that tax administration and taxpayer consider the concerns of the other party in the specific tax relationship and do not act contradictory to previous behavior the other party relied on. The second point I would tell you, next. yes, it's 
page three, fine, thank you. <laughs> the next point uh, is uh, a way especially to avoid tax disputes, and this is the unilateral voluntary agreement of the tax authority towards the taxpayer. The general fiscal code provides in some cases promises of the tax authorities intended to give protection of confidence to the addressee as a unilateral voluntary agreement of the tax authority. And there are three forms. The first one is a binding ruling. Upon request, the tax authority may grant a binding ruling with regard to the tax treatment of exactly determined but not yet realized facts. If the significant tax implications raise special interest. For the processing of the application, a fee will be charged, usually based on the value of the matter, or if this value cannot be determined, the fee depends on the time applied. The second form, with reliable statements obtained by the taxpayer from the tax authorities following a tax audit. The tax authority shall inform the taxpayer upon request how they will deal with the matter in future which had been audited in the past and was presented in the audit report, if this is of future importance for the taxpayer. And the third way, it's called Lohnsteueranrufungsauskunft, a difficult German word, with this request for information relating to wage tax, provided in the Income Tax Act, the parties involved may ask the tax authority of the permanent establishment whether and to what extent in each case the rules on wage tax have to be applied. That were some measures to avoid tax disputes, but if we not succeed in avoiding the tax dispute, we have to look for a settlement. And there are several ways for settlement of tax disputes. I will start with the actual settlement, in German called tatsächliche Verständigung. That means settlement about facts, not in legal questions. The tax office cannot decide to waive the legally due tax fully or partly. However, the tax law too allows to grant to the tax office room, which can be used to come to an arrangement with the taxpayer. In particular, those margins reveal when the facts are elucidated that means the tax audit shows that the turnover declared was too low, for example. The wish to avoid a dispute leads the involved parties to reach a binding agreement in respect to the further tax treatment. If the fact can be verified with difficulty or considerable effort uh, or inappropriate only, for example, in cases of estimate, valuation, future-oriented future uh, forecasts, the case law recognizes such agreements. The agreement binds only if it does not, not, not does lead to obviously incorrect results. From the tax office, an official shall be involved who is authorized to take a decision with regard to the taxing, of course. But the most used pre-court way for the settlement of tax disputes is the administrative appeal procedure shortly called the appeal in Germany, which is addressed to the financial office who issued the tax assessment note. And this financial office has to deal with this appeal and it has to decide on it. The administrative appeal offers to the tax administration the possibility to review the cases. Preceding the legal process as pre-trial proceedings, it serves multiple purposes. The first is, the legal protection of the affected person or her authorized representative, for example, a tax advisor, and only this person can initiate and finish the process. The second purpose is the self-control of the administration that is reviewing the matter fully, but the administration and is even entitled to change the assessment for the worst possible. And the third purpose is the relief of tax courts. The pre-trial proceedings have a so-called filter function. Most of the proceedings may be terminated by the appeal and prevent a legal, agent, a legal action, 
because uh, I said uh, the pre-trial appeal is to address to the financial office uh, which issued this tax assessment. So what about the admissibility criteria for an appeal? If the admissibility criteria are met, the tax office deals with the matter itself. If not, the appeal is dismissed as inadmissible. The possibility to apply to tax authorities must be given and the appeal must be legally admissed. The appeal is admissible in tax matters, in law enforcement matters, in matters of tax advice and others, if the regulations were declared applicable. That means, for example, an appeal can be admissible if uh, someone who is unemployed uh, wants to make an appeal because of the unemployment benefit. He cannot do it at the financial office, of course. That is ad uh, not admissible. He has to do it uh, at the employment office. The right to object is available if the person can claim to the aggrieved by an admin administrative act for or its omission. The deadline for appeal must be observed. The deadline principally comes up to one month in Germany after notification of the administrative act. The appeal must be submitted in writing. And similar to each legal remedy, the appeal presupposes a need for legal protection which will result in general from the complaint. Now some more details regarding the appeal. The appeal will not cause a devolutive effect. That means the authority which issued the challenge administrative act decides the appeal by itself. The filing on appeal does not suspend the execution of the challenged administrative act. The obligation to pay the tax is not eliminated with the appeal only. But to suspend the execution is possible if we submit a request that the execution shall be suspended. The fiscal authority, however, may suspend the execution in whole or in part. The execution shall, shall be suspended on request if, for example, there are serious doubts about the legality in the challenged administrative act. The tax office may suspend the decision on the appeal if it depends completely or partly on the existence or non-existence of a legal relationship which is subject to a pending legal action or which is established by a court or an administrative body. If it seems appropriate for important reasons, the tax office can order a stay of the proceedings prior to the consent of the person who filed the appeal. And the proceedings stay by virtue of law if because the specific legal question proceedings are pending at the ECJ, the European Court of Justice, and the Federal Constitutional Court or a Supreme Federal Court in Germany. At least the financial office has to make a decision on the appeal. If the affected person uh, or her authorized representative doesn't take back the appeal, this is also uh, one option, for example, because the opportunity of changing the assessment for the wars. The tax office has several choices to bring the proceedings to a conclusion. The first choice is if the admissibility criteria for appeal are not met, the appeal has to be rejected as inadmissible so the taxpayer has not succeeded with his appeal. This is number, number A. Please go to page 8. I'm on page 8 now. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's number A. Yes. And the second choice is the tax office dismisses the objection as unsubstantiated. The administrative act may also be altered to the detriment of a person concerned. However, the person concerned must be informed prior to the dismission, which offers her the possibility to take back this appeal. But in this case, B, uh, the taxpayer has also not succeeded. Next page, please. Uh, the third choice, number C. If the appeal proves fully justified, the tax office will help the objection in its entirety. 
the challenge administrative act will be withdrawn, modified, or cancelled, and so the taxpayer has fully succeeded in this case number C. And the fourth choice is if the appeal is partly justified, the tax office provides partial remedy by modifying or cancelling partly the challenged administrative act. Moreover, the appeal shall be rejected as unjustified in a formal decision of objection. The appeal is partly granted in a formal decision of objection, and the tax office issues a formal partly decision of objection if only a part is ready for decision. So in this case, D, the taxpayer has partly succeeded. One remark to the uh, appeal, to the administrative appeal procedure in Germany, it is free of charge. There's no charge. And uh, at the next slide, uh, at least a little few on possibility, on possible following legal actions. If the taxpayer has not succeeded or partly not succeeded, that were the cases A, and B, and D, of course he can go to court. The decision on appeal shall be accompanied with an information on legal remedies now. Upon completion of the appeal procedure, the taxpayer has the opportunity to assert his rights in a judicial procedure in front of the courts. The legal action in financial matters is governed by the regulation of the finance jurisdiction. The litigation is subject to certain conditions. The financial judicial system consists of two courts in Germany. In the first instance, judging the facts, the fiscal court decides on facts. The federal fiscal court, as an appellate court of appeal, is in charge of appeals and complaints relating the decisions taken by the first instance. So that's an overview about uh, avoidance and settlement of tax disputes in Germany. Thank you for your attention and спасибо за ваше внимание. Herbert, спасибо за ваши слова. Вопрос есть? Да, пожалуйста. Your questions, please. Use the microphone. Now, uh, uh, to continue with what Anatoly Gennadievich said about the guarantees uh, at the pre-trial and the uh, trial stage, my question is to both speakers. Uh, um, so the position of the taxpayer can be uh, worsened uh, at the time of the um, uh, complaint consideration. What do you think of that? In Russia, it is not possible, and the draft law does not uh, envisage that. But with you, it can happen. So, uh, um, as a result, um, 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 there is a possibility of uh, the um, uh, additional charge and then evidence. Is it accepted at this, uh, any uh, new evidence accepted at this stage of appeal or not? And uh, my question is to Mr. Arakelov, what do you think uh, we can expect in Russia as well? Additional evidence at the time of appeal. I should start, if I may, with uh, additional evidence. As for the um, uh, additional evidence, we um, uh, actually considered that in our draft law within the framework of the um, uh, appeal, uh, the uh, taxpayer can provide extra um, evidence if um, the taxpayer explains uh, properly why the um, documents um, uh, have not been presented at the earlier stages. We think it's all right, it's normal, because uh, we need to think about the quality of consideration. At the same time, we do not want uh, uh, to create a situation when the um, uh, Court of Appeal um, works with too many new documents. After all, the um, um, earlier um, um, a decision is uh, reached on the basis of documents, but there is a possibility. And in the Czech Republic, there is a similar principle. As for uh, your uh, question uh, concerning about the um, uh, additional charges, no, it's possible, impossible, no, there is no way. It, um, 
of course, in, in, in the proceedings, you can give additional facts. You can uh, give uh, some new facts in the procedure, of course. Uh, but if uh, the tax office comes to the result, uh, the assessment could be changed to divorce, uh, you can take the appeal back. So it cannot come to additional charge. You have in every phase uh, the possibility to take your appeal back. Uh, if it could be changed to the to divorce, yes. But you can uh, bring uh, in the procedure every new fact, uh, uh, every new things, uh, every new facts uh, for uh, a better situation for the taxpayer. No more questions then. Uh, then allow me to uh, uh, draw your attention to the uh, uh, new concept of the uh, pre-trial system reform and the uh, um, system of appeal reforming. I know that in some European countries, for example in France, it is possible to appeal uh, to a higher uh, uh, level authority that uh, actually checks the uh, decision. Uh, and Stefan Oste is present here, who is a professor, professor of uh, domestic and international law of the uh, University of Sorbonne in Paris, uh, um, um, member of the International Association of, and Tax Group. Stefan, do I understand it correctly that in France this procedure is an alternative procedure, alternative to pre-trial settlement of tax disputes, and it exists within the framework of the um, tax administration. Stefan, could you uh, describe uh, the possibility of uh, applying your experience of uh, uh, tax dispute settlement in other countries uh, by other organizations? How if thank you. Thank, thank you very Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I, will, um, I will give you some uh, um, illustration of the way we are handling tax disputes uh, in France, but I, I would like to focus on the issue of uh, the uh, obligation to file a complaint before, before the tax administration, before going to court, as uh, I understand that this is precisely the new situation that you are dealing with uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Russia. So like in Germany, uh, we have also in France an administrative appeal procedure um, uh, where the tax administration has the possibility to review a prior decision. What I want uh, to stress as a preliminary remark is that um, uh, taking into consideration tax litigation, it's very important in my view to draw a line between two uh, totally different situations. The first situation is when a tax collection notice is issued by the tax administration after the filing of a tax return by a taxpayer. And the other situation, which is very different, is when the, the same tax collection notice will be issued by the tax administration after a tax audit. The two, the relations between the tax administration when it comes to tax litigation with the taxpayers, the relation between the tax administration and the taxpayers are very different if the litigation comes after a tax audit or if it does not. It's very important because in France, actually, we will apply the same principle for tax litigation in both cases. Ever the tax collection notice is issued after a tax audit or not. So the system that we, that we have in France is that once the tax collection notice is issued by the tax administration, uh, then we are in the field of tax litigation. Even, uh, if, even in, uh, in, in this administrative appeal procedure, that you have to, um, uh, to file, to start, before going to court. It is part, in the French system, of the tax litigation process. Um, so, like, uh, like in Germany, after a tax collection notice has been issued in France, it's not possible 
for taxpayers to go directly to courts. They have the obligation to file a complaint before the tax administration. And if this obligation is not uh, fulfilled, then the court will consider that, uh, uh, that uh, um, um, a petition which is submitted directly to the court is not admissible. So this is, of course, very important for taxpayers to comply with this, uh, this obligation. The obligation to file a complaint before, uh, before tax administration dates back to the 19th century and was actually progressively extended to uh, all taxes. It is now laid down in the tax uh, procedure code in France. But what is interesting is that this principle applies even when it is not uh, provided for by a specific text. There was a case uh, in the 90s which, which was brought before the French Conseil d'État, Conseil of State, which is the French highest administrative court, where uh, the tax which was at stake was not included in the scope of application of the tax procedure code. But there was no text uh, providing for the obligation to file a prior complaint to the tax administration. In spite of the absence of any text, the Conseil d'État, the court, the Supreme Court, ruled that it was compulsory for taxpayers to file an obligation. It is, uh, in the view of the French courts, a general principle of the tax procedure to file a complaint before the tax administration, before going to court, even if it is not provided for uh, by, by, uh, by a specific text. This, uh, 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 this administrative appeal procedure is, um, is a purely written procedure. There's no obligation for the tax administration to hear the taxpayer. And uh, like, uh, like in Germany, uh, when uh, the taxpayers will file a complaint before, uh, uh, before the tax administration, uh, it does not suspend the obligation to pay the tax. This is only when the taxpayer will apply for the suspension of payment of the tax and will provide guarantee to tax administration that it is possible for him not to pay taxes. Uh, the, statute, the statute of limitation that is um, uh, applicable in France requires the taxpayer to file a complaint until uh, the second year following the year of uh, uh, the tax collection notice has been uh, sent to the taxpayer. Um, so, uh, uh, and this will apply once again ever the tax collection notice has been issued after a tax audit or not even for regular uh, uh, tax returns, the same principle will, uh, will apply. And once, once the complaint has been filed, has been filed uh, the, the tax administration has a time limit of six months to, uh, uh, to make a decision uh, on, on the uh, prior complaint. And I think uh, I listened carefully to, what, uh, to the discussion that you had about uh, what happened once the complaint uh, has been filed before the tax administration. And of course, the, here there is a very important, it's a very important point because uh, if uh, there is no specific rule that will apply in the case where uh, at the end of this six month period, the tax administration would make no decision at all then it will be uh, clearly uh, uh, a violation of uh, the right of the taxpayers to get an effective remedy because that means that the tax administration will be able to delay the possibility for the taxpayers to go before the court without any time limitation. In France, there is a, s a system that was uh, uh, introduced to avoid that and the system is quite simple. At the end of a six month period, if there is no decision, explicit decision by the tax administration, then we will consider that the uh, complaint was implicitly dismissed by the tax administration. And then from this six month period, it is possible for the taxpayer to go to court even if there is no decision at all by the tax administration. And what is interesting is that in this case, when the, when the complaint 
was implicitly dismissed by the tax administration, it is possible for the taxpayers to go to court without any time limit. Also, if there is an explicit decision by the tax administration in the six month period, then uh, the taxpayer has only two months to be able to uh, file a petition before the court. So this is how the system, um, uh, the system is, um, is, uh, is working in France. This, um, uh, this obligation to file uh, prior complaint before the tax administration is actually well accepted by the taxpayers. And it is, in my view, very important for the regulation of, uh, of tax litigation and the relation between the tax administration and the taxpayer. I will give you some figures to, uh, um, to illustrate the importance of this, uh, of this process, of this, uh, this proceedings in, in France. According to French tax administration that has, out of 3.5 million of complaints that are filed every year before the tax administration, only 20,000 cases Will, be, will go before the court. So that means that uh, it's uh, less than one percent of all the complaints that goes before the court. Why, 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 why such a discrepancy between the two figures? Well, well, you have to keep in mind once again that these proceedings would apply also where there is no tax audit. And what happens is that most of the time uh, uh, complaints are filed by small taxpayers because they made a mistake when they filled their uh, tax return, they, uh, filled, uh, they, they didn't fill the right box in the income tax return, for instance, or they have a problem with uh, local, uh, small local taxes and so on. So out of these 3.5 million complaints that are filed every year before the tax administration, 90% are usually uh, accepted by the tax administration because it's only the correction of very small mistakes. But when it comes to tax audits, the situation is totally different, of course. Every year in France, we have 50, around 40, 50,000 tax audits. And of course, the 20,000 cases which are brought before the courts are most of the time cases that will follow uh, tax collection notice that have been issued after, after a tax audit. So that means that when you, uh, when you consider only the situation of tax audit, um, something like one out of two of uh, 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 litigation will be brought before, before the court. So this is something I think very important to, to keep in mind. Nevertheless, uh, the figures show that this uh, uh, procedure of, uh, of uh, prior complaint before the tax administration is extremely useful and effective for the regulation of the relations between uh, tax administration and, um, and taxpayers. Um, we have introduced in France quite recently new procedures of mediation uh, uh, and, uh, and particularly the tax administration created what we called um, uh, uh, um, tax conciliators which are in each department and, who could, uh, uh, and to, to which taxpayers could refer cases um, so that uh, an amicable solution could be found, could be find, be, could be found between uh, the taxpayer and, and the tax administration. And every year we have um, 80,000 cases that, have re that are referred to, this, to these tax conciliators. It's only cases where tax audits are not, um, are not involved. This spe specific procedure of conciliation applies only when there is no tax audit. So it's only, once again, small issues and most of the time uh, income tax issues, local government tax issues, usually very rarely VAT and corporate income tax. I think VAT and corporate income tax issues are only 10% of the total of the cases that are referred to the tax conciliators. Uh, still, it's an interesting, uh, an interesting initiative that was, that was taken by the tax administration. 
uh, you have to keep in mind that it is a purely informal procedure. I mean, it's not, it's not laid down by the law. It's, it's only a procedure which is provided for by administrative guidelines. And so, uh, the fact uh, for the taxpayers, the decision to refer the case to the conciliators would not suspend uh, the uh, time limit to, uh, uh, to brought a case before the tax administration or before the courts. And also, there is another initiative that was taken in 2002. It was the initiative to create a mediator in the Ministry of Finance, who is covering actually all the kind of uh, uh, disputes that could arise in the scope of, uh, uh, of competence of the Minister of Finance. So not only tax, but also customs, uh, anti-monopoly, uh, or whatever. Um, but, but this mediator will also, also play a role in, uh, in tax litigation. And every year, but the, the number of cases that are referred to the mediator are quite small. It's only 2,000 to 3,000 cases that are referred every year to the mediator. Usually, uh, when a, a taxpayer is considering a transaction with the tax administration, he will negotiate directly with the local office that has, uh, uh, that has decided the reassessment, for instance. So I, I, uh, well, well in, uh, in just to give, you, uh, to give you a brief explanation of the way the tax litigation is organized in France, like, uh, like in, uh, in Germany, we have a specific administrative court in France. We have two orders of jurisdiction, one judicial, one administrative, and it's the legacy of, uh, of the revolution. Uh, and um, and, uh, and the, 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 the courts that are competent in tax matters are administrative courts, so with uh, uh, three levels uh, of, uh, of courts, first instance courts, uh, administrative uh, court of appeal, and at the top uh, of, the, of, the, of the courts, there is the Supreme Court, which is called the Conseil d'État, uh, in, in France, but who will, uh, uh, who will consider facts only by reason of law and no, no review the reasons of facts that are only submitted to the first instance court and the, uh, and the uh, administrative court of appeal. The tax litigation, I, 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 give you, I gave you the, the number, 20,000 uh, uh, cases brought before the courts of first instance every year. Uh, the tax, um, uh, tax litigation would represent around 10% of the total of litigation, of the total of administrative litigation that are considered every year in France. So that is what I wanted to, to tell you, but of course I'm, uh, uh, very, uh, I will be very happy to take any questions if there, is, uh, if there, are, if there are questions. Here. Thank you for your interesting presentation. And in uh, Holland, in Holland, we have uh, these uh, experiments in the mediation. And here we have uh, uh, Van Kwang Kalsbeek. He's uh, the uh, an, uh, high administrative uh, administrative person in the Minister of Finance of the Netherlands. I recognize uh, Kwang, Doctor Kwang, please. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I guess that I've got more or less the graveyard yard shift. I guess that you're all hungry, um, so I'll try to speed it a little bit up. Um, First of all, in the Netherlands, we've got a strategic uh, objective, and that is a very simple one. We would like taxpayers uh, to voluntarily comply with tax uh, legislation. Um, we've got various, uh, let's say, pillars or, uh, through which we try to, try to achieve that uh, taxpayers will comply. Um, the first one is that we try to influence behavior and attitude of the taxpayer Furthermore, we are trying to um, make le legislation that makes it easy to levy tax. And we've got some ICT provisions, which makes it very easy for taxpayers to file their tax returns. Um, and those are, let's say, the key elements. 
through which we try to uh, come to that voluntarily uh, compliance. Um, our standard procedure is more or less similar to France and Germany, so I will not elaborate on that one, just to speed it up. Um, what we are trying to do, of course, is, is we would like to come to compliance. Um, and, and our experience is that you've basi we basically have got two, uh, two possibilities. Uh, the first one is that we've got a case at hand which is, uh, in which a rule of law is at stake. In that particular case, of course, we will not try to uh, delitigate. De uh, however, in if we have a case that does not involve a rule of law, then uh, it's our experience that delitigation is far more effective th than going to court. Um, so therefore, delitigation, and that's a very important one, is only applied in case we've got an appropriate case, which means no rule of law at stake. Um, how do we do that in practice? How do we delitigate? Um, in the Netherlands, we've got a system in which each taxpayer receives an assessment. Um, an appeal can be made against that assessment. That assessment is uh, sent over to the tax office that issued the assessment. Um, at the moment that we receive that assessment, the first thing that w we will start to do is to call the taxpayer. And we will ask the taxpayer, uh, why did you file an appeal? And we, from that experience, we are learning that, uh, I guess that, that, that is more or less similar in France, Stefan, that uh, if you talk to a taxpayer, you, you'll find out that a lot of appeals ca can be dealt with pretty uh, fast. Um, so just by giving a, f a phone call of five minutes, um, we, we, we reduce the amount of time involved in dealing with an appeal. Whereas in the past, we used to uh, write a letter, uh, well, that took us like one or two hours, uh, if it was a simple appeal, and, uh, well, a lot of more hours in case it was a very difficult appeal. So just by calling, uh, it's getting more and more easier to, to find out what the appeal actually deals with. And nine out of ten times, it does not um, involve a rule of law, but is, it is more a practical thing. Um, another thing is that after the call, uh, of course, there are still uh, appellants that say, well, we, um, we do not agree, and then a hearing procedure is in place. In that hearing procedure, uh, another uh, official of the Dutch tax authorities is involved, uh, so that he can, let's say, imp have an impartial look on the case at hand, and he will ask the taxpayer how did he come to his um, complaint. Um, by having that conversation, we are once again reducing the amount of complaints. And um, a particular one that we are having uh, some very positive experiences with is mediation. Um, we apply mediation in tax cases. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, that is not something that is done currently here in Russia. Um, what we learn from mediation is that, uh, well, I guess that one of the most uh, or best features is the fact that it is quick and easy. Um, in general, a mediation takes about uh, 10 to 12 hours. Um, in that mediation, we involve all relevant uh, parties. Uh, most of the times that means that the tax inspector will sit at, at the table. Um, of course, uh, the tax barrier himself. Uh, and we always invite taxpayers to bring along their tax advisors because uh, that makes it easier to, to come to a deal. And of course, in the mediation, deals are always within the boundaries of uh, the law. That's one of the big misunderstandings or one of the big biggest fears that if you would enter into a mediation, you would get a, um, an outcome that, that would not be within the boundaries of law. But of course, it is just, well, for us, it's pretty normal to have a conversation with taxpayers. Um, we are very used to that. Um, if, if we would talk about APAs, uh, if I look at my neighbor, 
um, we've got a very big history in talking to, to each other and come to an agreement. Um, I guess that you are, 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 are you familiar with the, the concept of mediation? I'm not sure. More or less? Okay. Okay, I'll speed it up. I'll, I'll skip the features of mediation um, there in the presentation, perhaps, that you'll receive that afterwards. Um, our mediations uh, are, have got various subjects. Uh, they, they can ha have as a subject income tax, they, they can have as a subject VAT, corporate income tax. Um, we apply it with respect to all kinds of taxpayers both uh, individuals as listed companies, uh, multinational companies, uh, all type of comp companies are involved in our mediations. And for us it was, uh, uh, well, we found out that, that let's say the effect is more or less the same in all type of cases. So therefore we find it a very appropriate uh, tool uh, to come to that voluntarily compliance. Um, so what we are trying to do at this moment is to incorporate, let's say, the mediation skills that a mediator has. We're trying to learn those skills uh, to our tax inspectors because, of course, they are the first ones to deal with a tax issue. And in case they have got that, those specific tools, uh, it's more or less easier for them to find out what uh, dis the dispute is really about. Is it a really tax issue or is it, let's say, uh, somebody who is annoyed, um, et cetera, et cetera? And I'll be open and frank with you. Uh, let's say uh, the fact, perhaps you would assume that uh, somebody is only annoyed, let's say, in an individual tax case. Well, uh, if we look at our cases with listed companies, um, uh, let's say CFOs, uh, head of taxes, they're only human. Uh, so a lot of uh, co complaints are also found in, let's say, the bigger cases. Um, given the fact that we've got a very high success rate, uh, which is uh, 80%, um, so, so four out of five cases um, ends successfully. And what do we mean by successfully? Successfully is in the opinion of both the taxpayer and the tax authorities. So. Um, given that high success rate, we are trying to use mediation more and more uh, and the amount of cases incre is increasing rapidly. Um, I guess that, that is it for the moment, so uh, if I would jump to my conclusions. Um, delitigation is a tool to achieve our strategic objectives. Uh, the most important one is voluntarily compliance. Um, we apply it only in appropriate cases. We do not apply mediation uh, if there is a, a rule of law at hand. And uh, of course, it is still developing uh, in the Netherlands itself. So perhaps I can tell you something more about that in another year. Thank you very much for the moment. <coughs> and of course, any questions are welcome. Yes, uh, one question, this procedure of mediation is m more effective to your mind than the procedure of uh, court appeals. And in your view, do you believe that this uh, procedure of mediation is more or less similar to in effectiveness to court appeals? And do, you uh, and do you find some cases which are not fit for mediation? which are gross violations or something like this? Um, well, the advantage of mediation uh, is, is the fact that in a mediation, you come to a conclusion that satisfies both the interest of the taxpayer as the interest of the tax authorities. Um, that is, a, let's say, an advantage above a court ruling because in most court rulings, somebody has, has got the feeling that he has lost the case whereas the other party has the idea that it has won the case. So we find that a very important advantage if we talk about uh, coming to voluntary compliance. I mean, if you've got a solution that fits both parties, well, then you're happy to continue. Whereas if you have got the feeling that you've lost, uh, you may, well, would like to evade tax next time, for instance. 
Um, are there any cases that are not appropriate for mediation? Yes, of course. Um, the most important one is uh, in case uh, a rule of law is uh, at stake. So if it's, it's purely a theoretical uh, uh, case, and of course there are some other uh, moments uh, that we do not apply mediation. Uh, in that respect, you can think of if there's a physical threat uh, or in case, uh, let's say, uh, the case has escalated very highly. A lot of, I mean, when people do not want to talk to each other, then of course you, you shouldn't start a mediation. Um, because one, uh, sitting at a mediation table v voluntarily is a very important characteristic of mediation. Is that an answer to your question? Uh, thank you very much uh, for your interesting information about this mediation. But uh, whenever we talk about methods of settlement of various uh, tax disputes, of course, uh, it's very interesting to refer to the system of the administrative procedures which exist in the United States. I would like to recognize uh, Richard Edenhardt, which is... Uh, a uh, uh, leading authority in the field of uh, in the field of uh, this uh, uh, Peter Reinhardt uh, is partner of Ernst and Young uh, company and uh, he believes that there are of course certain procedures uh, which could be uh, rely upon and in solution of disputes and it could apply to various stages of disputes. Please tell me, Peter, are there any procedures which you would uh, uh, recommend from your EOS experience? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will try to answer the question. Uh, I have been in Russia for 20 years, but my passport is still American, and uh, I do not uh, always remember what uh, uh, is happening in the United States, but time is very limited, so I will try to answer your question very uh, quickly, uh, referring to just some of the uh, global um, um, uh, things. Uh, first of all, about the United States in general. Uh, the fact that, uh, now, here is what we uh, can see when we look around the world. We can see two trends that are always to be considered, and the United States uh, uh, represent these both uh, uh, quite well. The first trend is as follows. Um, uh, there is um, um, an, an extended interest uh, on the uh, part of all the countries to the new mechanisms of uh, um, um, settlement of disputes and uh, some of these programs appeared recently enough and so do not uh, uh, think that uh, what we're describing here has been in existence for hundreds of years many of these mechanisms uh, um, um, are quite new uh, so uh, the uh, 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 after uh, 20, uh, after the year uh, 2008, uh, these procedures uh, became most interesting and widely discussed. And uh, the successful programs are easily and effectively copied in Holland and in some other countries. We can see um, in Holland uh, programs similar uh, to the ones we have, and uh, the idea is very good indeed. But it does not happen everywhere in the world. There are exclusions. and. Uh, um, um, in Japan, for example, they do not have any programs like that there. Um, probably that is why there is no one from Japan talking to you today. So any uh, program, including the ones we have in the United States, uh, are aimed at a win-win situation. So um, the programs should be interesting not just for the tax uh, payers, but should be interesting to uh, the um, uh, tax authorities who can save um, resources. And uh, we uh, can see in the United States and in the world the uh, 
high level of interest uh, to the uh, mechanisms that uh, allow us to avoid disputes. So we try to settle disputes even before the uh, uh, revenues are filed. And 87% uh, um, um, uh, of the um, uh, heads of the tax authorities either plan to introduce these uh, programs or already have them and plan to expand them over the next year. Uh, they are uh, 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 the other mechanisms of dispute settlement are not not uh, uh, neglected at all, and uh, so the horizontal monitoring and uh, uh, some others. Uh, and uh, uh, you uh, uh, can uh, get on the slide some of the from the slide some of the major programs. Uh, uh, slide number five shows the ones that uh, are available um, uh, prior to the. Um, uh, a return of the uh, uh, revenue declaration. So, uh, it's, uh, 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 others uh, are quite new in spite of the um, age of the tax system. So, it's the signing of the agreement uh, between the parties and before the uh, declaration is filed, uh, and, uh, and then. Um, um, uh, uh, about fifty thousand uh, dollars to be paid, but uh, if the tax payer uh, can do it, uh, uh, then it is uh, possible to um, um, uh, document everything in advance, a uh, general understanding of the issue as applicable to the current year and uh, for the uh, next four years and uh, 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 then um, a uh, private letter, that's uh, uh, another program, uh, it's $11.5 uh, uh, thousand, the rest are free. And uh, uh, there, are, there are programs um, which help to regulate uh, um, issues for the whole sector, um, industrial sector, certain conditions they will have to be complied with. And there is a, a cap, as I said, and I would like uh, to thank uh, uh, you for that, and then, then of course, the um, advanced um, um, uh, pricing agreements, and um, it's um, important for such countries where private business dominates, like the United States. It does not mean that there are no mechanisms at the uh, post-filing period. They're also listed for your information here. I'm not going to speak about them in any detail, but they are varied, and. Uh, 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 here we can find a program of the accelerated issue resolution uh, within which we can immediately uh, apply decisions uh, that proceed from the audits uh, um, concerning a certain um, uh, tax paying period and uh, relate them to some other tax paying periods. And we can um, uh, 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 apply other programs with the position um, appeal. So um, that's one. The audit is still uh, on, and there is already one um, um, issue that is disputable. It is possible to um, um, work on that even before the audit is finished. And the fast track settlement uh, uh, procedure. That's a, a process um, within which um, it is possible. Uh, on just one page at the time of the consideration of the uh, case, uh, uh, particularly uh, um, uh, concerning major uh, international taxpayers, uh, send it to the uh, operations division and uh, provide a um, um, fast uh, track um, procedure applied. And uh, uh, so, uh, so here's uh, the programs that are available in the United States, and so you can compare them. And uh, you um, uh, can compare them with the context of Russia, uh, the draft law and the amendments and the uh, adjustments. And uh, uh, we can see we're all working in the same direction. And uh, it's typical uh, for the world in general, particularly for the post-filing period. Uh, so that uh, uh, we can avoid uh, the uh, litigation. And I really would um, uh, like to uh, say once again uh, that uh, this is uh, the most important instrument uh, um, for the um, country, for any tax system. Thank you. Thank you for taking up too much time. Thank you, Peter. Uh, uh, no, finally. Because uh, really, time is um, uh, 
uh, up. I would like Wolfgang uh, to say a few words very briefly uh, concerning this matter. Wolfgang, uh, as you know, works for OECD. And so, Wolfgang, what's your opinion? Yeah, thank you very much. I will indeed be, be very brief. First of all, I would like to say that the OECD in uh, its recommendations has taken up a lot of uh, the pre-court and out-of-court settlement procedures that have been experienced in uh, many of the OECD member countries, in particular AAs, uh, which means that the OECD definitely advocates out-of-court settlement and uh, would not go for litigation. And if I may just uh, add as a so-called pre-closing remark, uh, an overarching uh, remark, which goes back to a study by three university professors that performed a study at um, Harvard University back in 1993 on negotiations. And they said, well, one can basically follow three different approaches. One can say, well, the dispute is solved on the basis of who is more powerful. Well, who is more powerful in tax litigation or tax settlement? The company, of course, has all the information, so it has some sort of power. The tax administration, on the other hand, has the formal law behind it. Well, the second possible approach would be, who is right? Let's go for litigation and let the judge decide. Well, there's one example, GlaxoSmithKline Canada, which is a pharmaceutical company, litigated a multi-billion dollar case and the final court decision was uh, submitted 17 years after the company had actually uh, filed the appeal. And at the end of the day, after 17 years, the interest amounted to more than 300% of the original tax that the company had owed. So one could also therefore say litigation is a lottery, so not a good way forward. What remains is an uncontroversial approach, and that is try to reconcile the interests of tax administration and taxpayer. And what is important in that field is, and I think we heard it from many of the panelists here, the relationship between the taxpayer and the tax administration and mediation, for example, APAs and all these other measures take this feature into account and that is and should be based on cooperation and trust, which of course needs possibly to be developed if something is new in a country that needs time. But this would, I think, and that is also the OECD way, would be a good way forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Volgang. If possible, finally, uh, just a couple of words. Uh, you know, uh, I first of all, wanted to thank our colleagues uh, for their most interesting um, contributions. So thank you so very much. Uh, thank you for coming, um, for agreeing to come. I would like to thank everybody for being with us. And uh, uh, I listen to all of you, and I can uh, say um, at the end the following. Uh, our common goal uh, is... Um, mm, uh, well known is that we uh, want to have uh, a smaller number of conflicts and uh, uh, disputes. Uh, this is our ultimate goal, I must say. We uh, would like to avoid uh, conflicts and uh, we uh, understand uh, certainly that we're a young um, uh, tax system and we're just developing towards that. Of course, the first steps have been taken and our draft law uh, is one of these steps. Actually, it is the first uh, stage uh, of the um, creation of a system of um, uh, mediation and reconciliation. We will have to work on that step by step. I absolutely agree that the problems of horizontal monitoring is most important. It's important to decide certain provisions and certain aspects while we are at the start, so to speak. The, the mediation and uh, reconciliation. Um, uh, uh, um, advanced agreements. Uh, these are all important issues and uh, uh, we believe that uh one of the first uh, steps um, um, by us is being already uh, um, 
worked on. Uh, so we need to avoid conflicts between tax administration and uh, uh, taxpayers. Thank you, Kelly, colleagues. Thank you very much for taking part in our